up, compassionate people? How's it going? Welcome to Vegan News. And uh, before we start today, I want to dive in real quick and talk about some things that happened with me. Uh, if you recall from a previous video, I talked about the pick lines I've had and things like that. I got this thing now. It's a uh, port. It still works kind of the same way. You get the little thing on the end to put the fluids in it and all that. Uh, but it has far less chance of infection. It was actually a surgery to put it in. It took a little bit to recover from. So that's why some of my other videos were not, you know, the, the stories didn't line up with time because I filmed them previous to this surgery. So I apologize for that. I put it in a pin post. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right to our first story of the day. Starbucks in the UK will now be carrying almond milk at all their locations. They already have coconut and soy milk available, but now almond is too. I myself prefer almond, and I think a lot of other people do as well. Coconut can kind of screw with the flavor. Soy mm, doesn't always work so great, especially in hot drinks. So, good news to have the almond milk on board. Vegan cheeses are flying off the shelves. Julian Molnar, sorry if I butchered your name, has started a new business called Fresh Start Fomage. Apparently, fomage is now becoming a, uh, a new word for vegan cheeses. I don't accept it. I'm going with Gary. The current line of cheeses is chevrey, cheddar, gouda, and feta. She works to keep the most minimal amount of ingredients and processing in her cheeses as, as she can get away with. When Julia became vegan, she was a stage actress starring in a lot of musicals and singing and things like that. With her veganism came a change of things and that's why she named the business Fresh Start Fromage. She's starting over in her life and I wish her the best of luck and I'm sure everybody else does too. There'll be links. Nope. Get down. Come here. There'll be links down below like there always is to everything and you'll be able to find her website, where to purchase the cheese and all that. Stinker. <laughs> Tell them how bad you're being. Tell them how bad you're being. I'm being bad. Yeah, they knew that was me. <laughs> he he doesn't speak English. He only speaks German. In Portugal, it is now illegal for certain restaurant institutions not to have a vegan option available. Awesome canteens, which I assume is a cafeteria type thing. We don't we don't call it that in America, and we rarely have cafeterias outside of a. Anyway, schools, universities, hospitals, and prisons all must have a vegan option under the new Portugal law passed very quickly. Especially when you consider how long it takes here in the U.S. and other countries to pass something, especially something like this. They did it in a matter of like less than a year, which is incredible. The Portuguese Vegetarian Society collected 15,000 signatures to give to Parliament in 2016. From there, they were able to get the bill drafted and put through very quickly. This is incredible. I really hope to see more in the coming years in different countries, including my own. There should certainly be, even from a business owner's perspective, you know, I, I've had a business in the past. Why wouldn't you have at least like one option? You, there, there's always things on the menu you can make vegan why wouldn't you have a separate vegan menu to maximize your potential for profit it's my thought the 2017 best vegan cheesesteak in philly contest is now going on it's in the finals and it's a fight out between blackbird pizzeria frankie's on fairview and whiz kid out of the three i've had blackbird pizzeria's cheesesteak and it is mind-blowing you you won't even believe that it's vegan it, like the the meat is so beefy or chickeny depending on which kind you get the cheese sauce is incredible the vegetables are perfect it's it, i i can't wait to get back to philly so i can get one uh, i really hope blackbird wins again they've won before they've also ranked if i recall correctly i will look this up they ranked uh in the best cheesesteaks in philly once before and, and that wasn't just vegan cheesesteaks like this contest it was all cheesesteaks and they were like in the like top 10 or 5 or something like that really cool everything at blackbird pizzeria is incredible root beer barbecue wings sounds crazy it's awesome five times super bowl winner tom brady has teamed up with purple carrot they're a company that makes athletic performance meals and uh just regular everyday meals it's a meal delivery service the one tom brady has created that is vegan is called the TB12 Performance Kit. It launches on April 3rd and runs $78 a week 
for two servings per meal and three meals a week. That's that's a really good value for 78 bucks. None of us could make the meals that they're making out of $78. I guess that's just the way it goes when you buy in large bulk. The CEO of Purple Carrot, Andy Levitt, believes that somebody mainstream like Tom Brady is going to help draw in the non-vegans. And I agree with him, of course. I'm sure most of you do. He had this to say. A lot of people, when I started Purple Carrot, thought a plant-based diet kit would be a niche in nature market. And I think we've shown through our growth that plant-based has become far more mainstream. And he's absolutely right. We're seeing it blossom and, and go nuts. 2017 is like the year of veganism. It's blowing my mind for sure. One of the biggest things helping Purple Carrot right now and why they were able to get Tom Brady in a contract like that is in 2016, they actually got a $5 million injection of investment money, which allowed them to get their meal kits in Whole Foods across the nation. And they're teaming up with different celebrity chefs to create plant-based gourmet meal kits. Easy things that people are used to. Uh, one of the things they saw was a, was a, uh, a vegan meatloaf. Looked very good, but definitely something to check out if you can get the delivery service in your area. I wish I could. And further showing that carnists that bring up the ancestor excuse and talk about cavemen are completely wrong and idiotic. A recent discovery in a Spanish cave has revealed through dental tartar scraped off and examined that Neanderthals ate entirely plants, or at least this one did, and apparently drugs as well. There was traces of different types of, of natural drugs from different plants that they were eating to get high, I guess, and probably take care of pain. The tartar revealed that their diet was primarily pine nuts, mushrooms, and mosses. The El Cedron Cave, think I said that correctly? is where the remains were found, and it's dated to between 42,000 and 50,000 years ago. This is a very important find, not just for us, <laughs> obviously, for the scientific community as a whole. This kind of opens up a whole new thing. We never had that much information previously. But the examination of the tartar was also DNA checked, so they were able to get conclusive evidence of what all that tartar and plaque was made up of. Now, this doesn't mean that they didn't eat bugs or if they found a corpse along the way somewhere. That's not what this is saying at all. Certainly early men were like cheetahs. We were scavengers. We still would be if it wasn't for technology. Yes, I love technology, but not as much as you, you see. But I still love technology, always and forever. But the truth of our diet before we had the technology was plants and we were plant-based. Maybe a little bit of an insectivore from time to time. We did what we had to do to survive. So this is a good retort to those who, to those carnists who want to insist about ancestry and cavemen and all that. This is the newest scientific research. You can just throw it right in their damn face. And finally, our story of the day is... Uh, a pretty hectic one on vegannewsnow.com. You can find both of the stories written by another Chloe, Chloe Rivka. Uh, she's writing for us. I don't even know where to start. Let's start with when things first started to break. Chloe had, for her restaurant by Chloe, if you're not familiar with it, started in New York City. She was a contestant on some sort of reality show. I don't watch TV, so I don't really re recall. I think it was like a Top Chef type thing. Anyway, it's beside the point. Her success in that small restaurant and the, the, some of the fame she garnered from a TV show, she was able to attract some investors. Unfortunately, these investors have been, in the last year, growing her restaurant insanely quick, and they gave up listening to her. And they pretty much told her, go f*** yourself. That's more or less what they said. And these investors are using the money from the by Chloe's they're expanding and not keeping the way it should be. They're, they're ruining the vegan recipes, they're ruining the reputation of by Chloe. But beyond that, they are using the money to fund their steakhouses. So as of right now, a lot of people are boycotting by Chloe. Uh, I don't have one near me, so it really wouldn't make a difference. It's something I planned on going to eventually in New York, but I certainly won't be as of now. Uh, and they're really screwing Chloe over here. Uh, badly. She just lost in court. That's the newest story. And again, it'll, it'll be linked down below. You can read the first story and the second story. They're, they both link together and they're on our site. Uh, but the newest thing to come out is she lost in court 
to her appeal about all this stuff that's been going on and about um, what these people are doing. They're, they've basically taken the business away from her and they're running away with it. You know, in the interview, she talks about how she worked for two years to build recipes that were perfect. And I know what that's like, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. And not just with food, but with other things. She spent all that time perfecting her craft and what she loved. And I, I'm, I'm, this is something that might happen to you or me, what's happening to Chloe. You know, you have the chance to get the investors in to realize your, to realize your dream. And you jump on it. And unfortunately, that wasn't the right move. And she's getting really hurt over this. And she, the, it, in her interview, it pretty much comes down to now she's just hoping to be able to keep the name by Chloe and make them change to something else, which I don't think is going to happen. But that's going to suck because she really built a brand around by Chloe, which is her name. And she'll never be able to use it again if she can't get it back out of this situation. Uh, I really hope she does. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a bad, bad situation. I certainly recommend reading the articles. It's very long. Uh, the, the saga that has been going on is very long. But it is a cautionary tale for all of us, no matter what we're doing. You know, uh, me doing this show, or if, you're, if you are writing or you're a painter or, you know, anything. Uh, if, we're, if you have a vegan business and somebody comes in with the money... No matter where you're at, you might have to say no. Or at the very least, make sure you get a lawyer to look over everything very carefully because she's getting hurt very badly and her business is ruined. More or less ruined unless these people turn around and do what they're supposed to. And I don't think they will. So, boycott it. Boycott by Chloe. Just boycott it. Especially the new Seaport location. She's not even in control of that. Uh, she's... I don't even know if she's in control because it doesn't go into details. None of the sources have anything really of whether or not she even has control over her New York location, the original, anymore. I hope she does. Uh, I hope she gets to keep something, and I hope she can cut this and keep the name. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it's great to be back. It feels really nice. It's been a while since I got to do all this and do all the research and... Uh, record it, it just it just feels really good I'm more hydrated than I've been in a while the new port is healed up finally it took took like two weeks or something uh, you know it still hurts a little but I'm feeling pretty good about everything and soon on my personal channel which I'm not gonna link yet I'll wait but you could probably find it if you really want to <laughs> uh, I am going to start vlogging and making like mini movies every day to get myself better and better and better at editing and learning different things but one of my big drawbacks is I've been using my phone. So I need to get uh, a real camera. So maybe soon you'll see a quality change for the better. We shall see. Until then, ooh, ooh, wait, wait, one last thing. If you notice, this show is longer and has more stories. Uh, that was requested by a bunch of people that I make the show longer, maybe do it once a week, which I'm going to try that format out. So from now on, it'll be on Fridays and it'll be about a 15 20 minute show from now on uh i feel like that that could work we'll see if people hang on and actually watch the episodes uh people tend to uh leave past like the five or six minute mark on a video but we'll give this a try i would like to be able to do one every day but i'm just one person and i have a you know a genetic disease disability that i deal with so that's not really in the cards i did try to do a, a video every single day before and it just burned me out immediately and I don't want my research to get sloppy or the way I cite things. Plus, I'm writing for my website now. And, I, you know, I also do the social media stuff for the Vegan News website. So, along with doctor's appointments and everything else. So, anyway, let's stop talking about that. And uh, I will see you guys next Friday. I will upload either in the afternoon or the e I will publish either in the afternoon or the evening. You can leave a comment below about what you think about everything, what you think about the longer show, uh, just what you want to see. What you want to see is what's important to me, as long as you're vegan. <laughs> if you're not vegan, I might be able to forgive you if you start down the path. But anyway, thank you guys. Uh, I'll see you next Friday. Later.
cords. You're going to get shocked, okay? Damn, you're really shedding. It's not summer yet. <laughs>